Hey guys, so as I promised earlier, uh, in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how you can make an outline and apply it to any kind of texture. This feature is kinda useful for those who develop UI, so basically it can be used for an icons and you can outline props and define the rarity of an item, or maybe if you have like the world or minimap to go uh, from the realistic look, uh, maybe to something like schematic look. Or just like in my case, I used it with the floating damage. It's like the uh, second variation of making an outline uh, on the on the target. This approach utilized the spiral blur uh, material function, which basically samples your texture several times with the offset on the whole directions, like top, bottom, left, right, and uh, diagonal directions also. And the number of steps define the quality and the resolution of your uh, outline. So uh, you should go uh, with uh, as possible low numbers as you can. Otherwise, it can be kind of roughly bad for your performance. But uh, all depends on you. So uh, as you can see, we have the spiral blur texture material function, and uh, here we have the name root node, which stands for the uh, texture object because uh, we cannot operate this function over the texture sample so first thing we need to make is uh, to convert our texture sample to the texture object so you can press the T key and the left mouse button and it's the shortcut for the texture sample then with the right mouse button simply convert it to the texture object uh, for those of you who want to have it as the parameter, you can also convert it to the parameter. So basically the same flow. Right mouse button, convert to the parameter. And then you can name it. So now with the texture sample here, we can preview our texture object. First I need to select the texture. I'm gonna with the donut like this and it's 5.6, so uh, here on the notes we have the preview button, which works like this. Few words about textures. So, if we talk about uh, images that we're gonna use with the UI, uh, to get the better results and to minimize calculations, I highly recommend you that your texture should have the alpha channel. Because here, if we and select everything, you may see that we have uh, the base uh, gradient from black to white and if we start making operations here, we'll have some visual artifacts. So for all of your textures, uh, having alpha channel is kind of crucial. Also, I highly recommend you that uh, to prevent leaking from the sides, in case your texture uh, doesn't have space in between the silhouette and the border. Uh, here in the texture, look for the tiling and simply go from the tiling method from the wrap to the clamp. And the last part before uh, we start arranging our logic is to deal with the spiral blur material function, the default implementation. So. Uh, here we have our texture, and uh, this kind of implementation is for my uh, floating damage. And you may see that I'm using here the red channel. Uh, basically, it's because my render target uses one channel, and it's the black and white uh, gradient. But uh, if we try to use red channel on the texture without alpha, which has uh, some information, like this, you may see that we have those stripes that cross the shape of my donut. So that's the reason why we need to have an alpha here. And if we change the red channel to the alpha, you may see that shader doesn't compile. That's because the default spiral blur material function works with the RGB, but not with, but not with the RGBA. And we need to change it. So if we double click our material function you may see that here we have the custom HLSL node here on the left you may see 
the code itself and it starts with the flow 3 for our current color. And the output basically is our current color, which also is flow 3. So uh, as this function is the engine's default, I highly recommend you to uh, find it in the browser and make a copy to your project, just like I made it. Then all you need to do is to go from the float 3 with the float 4 here and output should be float 4 also. Now if I press apply and go back to my material, you may see that everything works fine. And here we can see the preview of our uh, texture alpha. So now if we take a look at this preview, you may see that we have uh, outlines on the edges of our gradient, of our shape of our alpha. To make it work, we need to have the frag node and the following operation. So frag node takes the value that we have, it's the our gradient from 0 to 1, but once we subtract 0 0.5 multiplied by 2, we shift the, uh, the normalized value, so it's not going to be from the 0 to 1, but from minus 1 to 1. And when we use the absolute node, uh, it returns only positive values. Then if we use one minus, here we have our outline. So now we can play with the width of our outline. We can make it thinner, like this, or broader, like this. Now we need to apply the image and uh, clamp the values so we can have the donut with an outline. So I made two shortcuts, one for our outline and one for our alpha mask but with the offset. We can make our outline colored like this and we need to find a way to calculate the area that our image, our texture should occupy in between our outlines and also clamp our shape not to extrude like to the whole quad. So for this we need to subtract from our alpha with offset the outline which look like this and make sure you saturate the result because otherwise if we like add everything together and omit the saturation you'll see those artifacts like this and now just provide the results to the output of your material like this and here we go it's the start point so from this you can try to work with your mask, make it more sharper, more blurry, and so on. But that's it. So I hope it was useful for you. And uh, as always, please subscribe to my channel, leave your feedback, press like button and share with your friends. And also, if you want to support me monetarily, you can also, change, you can also check my Patreon page. See you soon, guys.